Today we talk about why does Ixie fail? I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. If there's one thing as a patient that you feel is an absolute, it's going to be that ICSI is going to make sure that your eggs get fertilized. I mean, what is more confident than taking a sperm and shoving it into an egg? I mean, that sounds like it's going to fertilize 100%. Yet, there are times when people do that, they don't get fertilization. Now, we've all heard of the times where people put sperm on top of the eggs and they don't fertilize. We call that failed fertilization. But what I'm talking about is when you actually choose to do ICSI or you find out your clinic does ICSI, and then you find out not all your eggs fertilized. And the question is why? I mean, does the person suck at ICSI? Or is there actually more to it than that? Now, to be able to understand this, you have to understand what ICSI is. ICSI, which stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection, is where we inject the sperm into the egg. Now, this is different than standard insemination where we just put the sperm on top of the egg. And the reason we do ICSI is because sometimes the sperm is very severely low, but there are other times we do it because someone has even failed fertilization with the standard technique where we just put the sperm on top of it. Today, we're going to focus on why does ICSI fail? So you can have a better understanding so you don't think that something went wrong at the IVF center or if there's something wrong with you. Now, don't get me wrong. ICSI is a fantastic specialized form of fertilization and has transformed the field. Matter of fact, I wouldn't be one of kids if it wasn't for ICSI. But this technique does bypass the natural process of sperm penetrating the egg and it's used in many cases, such as severe male factor infertility, things like low sperm count, poor sperm motility, or even abnormal shaped sperm, which is called morphology. It has literally revolutionized the treatment of male infertility. Prior to ICSI, most men had to use donor sperm to have kids. After ICSI, that is no longer true. Mind boggling. The part that is, is how Basically, is it possible? that this game-changing technique cannot guarantee successful fertilization. And we're going to talk about those reasons. The number one issue is going to be egg quality. The quality of the egg plays a significant role in the success of fertilization, regardless if you use ICSI or even standard fertilization. But eggs with genetic or structural abnormalities, or if they're immature or if they're post-mature, may not be able to support fertilization and subsequent embryo development. And therefore, you can have the best sperm in the world, literally Brad Pitt sperm, and you won't be able to have great fertilization if the egg quality is poor. And so women who are more mature usually have poor fertilization. And it's frustrating because it doesn't make sense. You put the sperm in the egg, but it did fertilize. But maybe it didn't fertilize because of something with the egg. And so the sperm did its part, but the egg didn't do its part. Now, following that logic of the DNA being abnormal in the egg, the same thing can happen with sperm. Now, I stated sperm issues are usually overcome by ICSI, and that's true. If you have low count, if you have low motility, all those things can be fixed. However, if the sperm's genetic content or the overall quality is bad, it can play a crucial role in failure of fertilization. If the sperm injected into the egg carries genetic abnormalities or is otherwise compromised in some way, it may not result in fertilization or create a viable embryo. So the genetic part is on both sides, both the egg and the sperm. And those are the top two reasons. Now, the third reason can be due to technical reasons. Now, I'm not saying you have to be the best in the world, but you have to be technically skilled to do ICSI. 
And there are small little techniques of the way you drag the needle out, the way you poke it in, the speed at which you pull up the fluid and inject the sperm in that can affect the chances of ICSI being successful. And so if you have an embryologist who is not skilled, they could potentially cause harm. There could even be technical difficulties during the injection process that can cause problems. And so the third thing is going to be technical issues as the most common after the first two. So now the fourth issue is activation failure. And what I mean by that is you've now got the sperm into the egg. And really the sperm is just DNA, right? So it should all work now, but there's actually more to it than just the DNA getting in the egg. There's actually a series of complex cellular events that need to take place for successful fertilization. This includes the activation of the egg, which involves the release of calcium ions and other biochemical changes that must occur. In some cases, the eggs may fail to activate properly following ICSI, and that can lead to the failure of fertilization. So not only can abnormal DNA in the egg cause problems, but the egg's ability to activate can sometimes cause problems. The last reason for failure is going to be damage to the egg. Of all the causes, this is going to be the least common. The ICSI procedure does involve the insertion of a needle through the zona pellucida, which is the outer portion of the egg, to deliver the sperm into the egg cytoplasm. And for most purposes, this goes very simple without issues. But in rare cases, the process can damage the egg, compromise its ability to support the fertilization process and the embryo development. And so this can show up as either a degeneration of the egg at the time of ICSI or can even show up the next day as an embryo that has degenerated. Now, as you can imagine, eggs of older women are going to have less ability to take the needle in them and can actually degenerate after ICSI. And so I have some patients who are a little bit more mature. And for them, I may do standard insemination because I'm afraid that ICSI could hurt their eggs. Now, that's pretty uncommon. So I really use that as a first line approach. But if they had a lot of degeneration, I will tend to try the standard insemination, even the sperm isn't perfect because I don't want to harm the eggs since they're fragile. And a lot of times your embryologist can let you know this when they're working with the eggs, can tell you that they were a bit fragile. And so if you had bad fertilization, where there was a bunch of G degeneration, and the embryologist said that the embryos were fragile, one option is, is to proceed with standard insemination versus ICSI. So does this mean people shouldn't try ICSI? Absolutely not. Matter of fact, I think ICSI is a fantastic method. The reason we don't use it all the time is because standard insemination can sometimes have better fertilization rates than ICSI. But as you can see, there's nothing more devastating than having failed fertilization. And so one of the reasons why people choose ICSI over standard insemination is that obviously male factor will be a cause, but even a previous IVF failure is going to be a cause for ICSI. If you didn't have good fertilization naturally, then we would do ICSI. The other reason we will sometimes do ICSI is in what we call PGT-M. And that's because if you're looking at genetic disorders, you don't want sperm to accidentally be pulled up in the biopsy and contaminate the testing. And so we'll do ICSI in that situation. In the end, don't be afraid to do ICSI. But the purpose of this was to talk about why does it fail and I don't want you to feel like you did anything wrong. It's not perfect, even though in our heads it seems like it should be perfect. Again, you are putting the sperm directly in the egg. It doesn't make any sense why it wouldn't work. But then when you start to think of it and realize it's not just about the sperm getting into the egg. It's more about the processes occurring afterwards. This is no different than getting the date you always wanted and thought, once I get the date, things will magically go better. Unfortunately, you got into Jill's house and thought that was going to be the end, but you didn't realize you had to have more game to be able to build the relationship. In the same situation, we may be forcing the sperm in, but we can't make the sperm and the egg tango.
Hopefully you found this episode helpful. Maybe you had problems with ICSI or wondered why it didn't work and this helped answer those questions. As always, if you have questions about certain topics that you want me to do, please feel free to send your questions to our email at tbft at newdirectionfertility.com or even go to our Facebook page at uh, Talk About Fertility Tuesday and put your questions there and I'll be more than happy to do a podcast on them. As always, if you enjoy this, tell your friends about it. Give us a good five-star rating. As always, I'll talk to you next week on Talk About Fertility Tuesdays.